Welcome to this guided meditation with Father Mark, your guide for a more intimate and transformative connection with Christ. Please pause, play, and adapt this aid to facilitate your own personal conversation with the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's come into God's presence once again, grateful for this opportunity to commune with the source of our life, the source of our strength, source of our existence, and also the, the goal, the end game, where we will all end our total and complete fulfillment, God himself. This time of communion with him is a real renewal of our energies, of our heart, our mind, our strength. The best thing we can do for our soul, best thing we can do for our body, for our minds, for our health, is to really spend time with the Lord. So we believe in you, Lord. We believe you're here with us, in your love sustaining us, and your interest wanting to be with us. Speak to us as we turn our hearts to you. We believe you're here, believe you're listening, believe you're eager to give us all we need. I hope in you, hope in your promise of, of goodness, of fidelity, your promise that we'll be blessed for poor in spirit, be blessed for peacemakers, your promise that we'll be blessed if we endure persecution and for holiness sake, that we'll be blessed if we seek first the kingdom of God and we hope in the fact that then all, everything else we need will be added to us, given to us, pressed down, running over, spilling, overabundant into our lap. We hope in all those promises, Lord, that as we make you our priority and your intentions our intentions, only good things will flow into our hearts, into our families. We love you, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. We love you because you are our Savior. You went to the cross carrying our sins. That that just judgment that should have been laid upon us, that we were guilty of and deserved, that sentence, that jail time, you've taken upon yourself to spare us to free us, to kind of pardon us what we were due. The injustice of our behavior that required a response of God to, to heal it and to make it right, to establish that just balance in the world again and in our relationship with him. You've stepped in. You said, Lord, have mercy on them. They know not what they do. Thank you, Jesus. We love you because you loved us first, that even while we were yet sinners, you died for us. So we love you. We're grateful, great for all your blessings, all your kindness, your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our families, for our jobs, for our financial situation, as good or as bad as it might be right now. We thank you for our health, as good or as bad as it might be right now. We thank you for our, our strength level energy level, all the good that you've given us, we thank you, for it all comes from you. And we accept, Lord, confidently, trustingly, the limitations we have, the difficulties we have. We accept it as our participation in the cross of Jesus, our filling up what's lacking in your sufferings. Lack is, is our lack, our, the, that space that's open for us to to step alongside you. It's that empty side of the cross where we can nail ourselves alongside you and in some small way participate in the salvation, redemption of the world, this extension of your body. We thank you for all of that. And we accept it all. Lord, we turn to you now in your gospel to receive your enlightenment, your strength, your truth. We look at Luke 10, 1 to 9. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs of every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I'm sending you. 
like lambs among wolves. Carry no bag, no sack, no sandals. Greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house. Eat and drink what's offered to you. For the laborer deserves payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it. Say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. On this day that we commemorate St. Luke, one of the gospel writers, one of the evangelists, we have this beautiful passage of Luke, of Jesus appointing 72 disciples, not just his most intimate apostles, who he sent out two by two, but now a larger group of those who have been following him, being formed by him and, and also by the apostles, ready to go out and extend his mission. Prepare the harvest. First thing that strikes me, Jesus, is that you invested time in the 72. You got them ready for this mission. You didn't just meet them and then immediately send them out. You accompanied them for a time. You invested in them. You loved in them. You forgave them. You taught them. You explained what your parables meant. You formed them. It's an invitation for me, Jesus, to imitate you, to form people, to accompany them, to help them go deeper in understanding the gospel and the church and the truth. Prepare them so that they are equipped to go out and prepare the ground for you to multiply the mission of the church, your mission. I could even examine myself, how do I do that? How do I invest time in those who are growing in their faith? How do I let myself be accompanied by you and by others to grow in my own faith? Another thing I led to meditate on, think about is, is your trust. That you trusted these people to go out and prepare your way. You trusted them to be able to message your gospel. Who could have messaged it as well as you? As powerfully, as nuanced, as, as smart as you. And yet you let these people who had been with you just for a time to go and represent you to be the first ones to speak about the gospel, to open the ways. And surely they would probably make mistakes and misrepresent and maybe not clearly preach you as well. Maybe uh, stumble a bit as they explain to you, explain you to others, but yet you trust them. You're more about participation than perfection. You want them to share in the mission. And in that sharing, that's already the building of the kingdom in the way you want. I'm also struck, Jesus, how you back them up. You say how they should go about it, but then, you know, you send them to preach and to heal, to cast out demons. You're going to give them your power where they are invoking you to cast out demons, you and your power will be there to back them up. I love that. I love how you trust them, but then also how you're going to support them 100% with your grace and your power. You give them the authority and the ability to bring peace to a household, to bring your kingdom of God and make it at hand for you, for them. And finally, Jesus, I'm struck about how the, the apostles that you sent out, the 72, the disciples, they're also supposed to be humble, kind of just accept what comes, the place that comes, the food that's offered, the people to really receive them and embrace them and accept them and stay there and not be critical and look to have the best situation, the best reception, the best house, the best collaborators. No, accept what comes your way. You know, if those if they receive you, stay there. You know, not if if they're capable or powerful or important or gifted, then stay there. No, whoever, whoever, they're good and they receive you, stay. Witness. 
bring peace. I love that, that free will offering of their time and their energy to whoever the Lord sends their way. Lord, all these attitudes of trust, of confidence that you have in your disciples and that you ask us to have in you, I pray you increase those fruits in my heart through this time of prayer. I'll take time now, Lord, just dialoguing with you about what inspired me, asking you to enlighten me and then to formulate a a resolution for my thoughts or for my words or for my actions today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This has been a guided meditation with Father Mark Haydu of the Legionaries of Christ. If this has helped you, please consider sharing it with a friend, along with the other meditations, homilies, and talks found on the Legionaries of Christ podcast, located on all major platforms, or go to rcnytristate.org for links.